After the death of his wife, Kratos must make a pilgrimage through Midgard with his son to scatter her ashes over the highest mountain in the realm. Boy. Not dead, not dead. The easiest thing to say about God of War is despite all the perceived changes, it's still a God of War game and comes with all the baggage that that entails. It's fundamentally the same in terms of combat, puzzles, excessive violence, and gore. It's extremely typical of the God of War series, even if it looks vastly different. The only thing that's really different is the story beats, and even then, it's not actually as different as it seems. Combat has reasonable depth, but it's very much an opt-in style. Your initial combat options are fairly interesting. While you do have a skill tree to unlock new abilities, you won't need any of them, as the game is simple enough to complete with just your core moveset, and many of the upgrades seem superfluous at best. A few upgrades are extremely worthwhile, however, and oddly enough, mostly for your child, Atreus. Atreus has some very useful applications in combat. He's mostly just AI controlled, but you can tell him to fire arrows with square. You'll need to do this against several of the more robust enemy types, but you can also use them effectively to create space for Kratos, or distract enemies with large shields to expose their backs. Your Leviathan Axe doubles as a ranged weapon and can be thrown and recalled at will. While your axe is thrown or sheathed, you'll switch to a hybrid shield and fist style which deals a lot of stun damage. Stun damage has replaced the standard quick kills, and once stun is built up, it's used for grabs and executes. If you choose to go bare-fisted, you'll build up stun and you can use the powerful grappling moves. If you stick with one of your other weapons, you'll be able to use the runic abilities associated with them. The runic abilities are interesting and varied and can be customized. You can have one light and one heavy runic attack which functions as a super move which can be used after a cooldown period. While there is reasonable diversity in your choices for runic abilities, you'll likely find one that you like and stick with it for the rest of the game. Certain enemies will also be color coded and be immune to certain elemental damage which is generally a mechanic I dislike. You do have three combat options throughout the majority of God of War so even if one is rendered useless against a certain enemy, you still have two alternatives at your disposal. There are RPG and character building elements in God of War but it does feel pretty unimpactful. The gear choices don't really feel important overall, and through the main story there will be a few standouts. Doing a few optional objectives early on will net you gear that will last you for the majority of the game, with the only real upgrades becoming available as post-game content, or from the optional realms that you can unlock. The puzzles are very typical God of War. They're quite basic, usually requiring you to freeze something with a Leviathan axe throw or, or shuffle some things around in the environment. They're mostly enjoyable to complete, but a few are timed, or are too precise which makes them a little more annoying than they needed to be. Jump. Really? Come. God of War looks and sounds amazing. Everything is top notch. The enemy designs are interesting and fun. The kills are brutal and satisfying. The set pieces are all fun and huge in scale. Again, it's typical God of Warfare. A lot of your runic attacks and Atreus's arrows also look extremely flashy. So flashy that the game crashed a few times on a standard PS4 when too much was going on. The on-screen text is extremely small. It makes it really hard to read the tutorials that come up in the beginning of the game, and especially when you're looking at ability names and descriptions in your equipment and upgrade menus. It's just far too small, and there's no justifiable reason for it, as there's no shortage of space in these sections. The accessibility features that allow you to simply hold a button instead of having to mash is a very welcome addition. It just perplexes me as to why this isn't on by default. Chalk it up to being a series staple that was left in. I would strongly recommend turning it on as soon as you can. All the voice acting is also excellent. The supporting cast especially is very well done. There are some really good interactions between Atreus and Kratos. Of course, Atreus is a child and does act like a child. During certain sections of the game, he'll completely disregard your orders and give you sassy backtalk. It feels natural for a child, but these sections can get a little annoying. They don't last very long, though. Ugh. Let me guess. Your brother isn't as talented as you, and his work is junk. Um, those things are accurate. Your point? It's all you ever talk about, over and over. Do something about it or shut up already. If you're familiar with God of War, you know God of War 3 was the end of Kratos' story, and it most definitely had a clear-cut ending. God of War is a direct sequel to 3, and does reference the previous events of the series. It does retcon some events of the series in order to take place, as well as glosses over how and why Kratos arrives in Midgard. The overall story is reasonable, but often feels a bit too classic God of War for the more mature themes the game is trying to present. Several events happen that simply should've and could've been avoided, but feel forced by the writing to make it all work. There are a few reveals that will be extremely obvious if you have even passing familiarity with the Norse mythology, and the finale is obviously there as an excuse to set up at least one more God of War game. What'd you find? Enough distraction. 
The difficulty of God of War is hard to judge accurately, and it's going to depend on your initial difficulty choice and how much you want to explore off the beaten path for upgrades. The normal difficulty represents a challenge that starts reasonably difficult, but ends up being quite easy towards the end of the story. The harder difficulties will be in a similar situation, but numbers are bloated and a single mistake may force you to restart a whole battle. There are a lot of aspects of the combat that make it more difficult than it should be. The main problems are the low depth of field of the camera and the cramped environments with tons of enemies to micromanage. It's almost impossible to keep track of everything at a time, especially in the larger battles. God of War does provide arrow cues around Kratos to tell you if an enemy or projectile is coming from behind you from off screen, but often these cues come far too early or far too late to be useful. A notification that an enemy is coming is fine, but projectiles are shown so early that you may actually miss time dodging them because you saw it coming and immediately reacted, only to be hit by it after a delay. The hardest part of the game is by far the initial 2-3 hours as you have extremely low damage output and lack any of the more advanced abilities to deal with the tougher enemy types. Once you adjust to the combat system and camera and unlock more useful abilities with an upgraded arsenal, the game becomes significantly easier. It's so much easier that around the midway point you can beat most encounters by simply mashing R1 for Kratos' basic attacks and spam square for Atreus' bow shots. This results in you stun locking almost everything to death on the normal difficulty without much issue besides a handful of the tougher enemies and bosses. This is mostly because there is low enemy variety and God of War throws a lot of fodder at you. There will be many encounters of simply wave after wave of the standard Draugr that are so non-threatening that you don't even need to engage or invest in the combat. Then you'll have other encounters which are just the same trolls and ogres you fought before, just a different color. The character building aspects do hurt the game a little bit. Enemies are tiered and you'll occasionally come across an epic tier enemy who will simply crush you indiscriminately. The game suggests that you come back to these enemies later with improved equipment as without it you'll be slogging through a massively long battle where if you make one mistake, you'll die in one hit. The harder difficulties are significantly more difficult. Starting out on the hardest difficulty will be an exercise in frustration and patience. Health values of enemies are bloated and the damage you suffer is pumped up to extreme levels. Here's an example of the first battle in the game. The first on normal difficulty the second on the hardest difficulty. You won't be able to stagger enemies easily and you'll die in a few hits. This turns God of War's harder difficulties into a waiting game or one of exploiting your ranged attacks and kiting enemies from afar. You'll be waiting for opportunities to take a safe hit on an enemy or otherwise die. It requires you to be extremely cautious and patient and punishes you relentlessly for a mistake. If you find that kind of difficulty interesting and engaging, you'll enjoy the higher difficulties. Personally, I don't really like difficulty based around bloated numbers for enemies and gutted numbers for myself. That's just what it feels like from my brief foray into the hardest difficulties. The normal difficulty will be a reasonable challenge in the beginning for most players, while then slowly tapering off as the game progresses. God of War would like you to believe it's an open world game, but it's actually extremely linear, with a handful of optional areas you can choose to explore off the beaten path at various points. These optional areas are gated by main story progression despite there being a very prominent hub area. These areas can yield powerful rewards and give you some insight into Norse mythology and have good world building aspects. Unfortunately, they may also just yield rewards that are useless to you, and significantly weaker than what you currently have depending on the order that you do them. Doing a quest on one side of the lake hub yielded an extremely powerful grip and wrist armor I used for the entirety of the game, and then the other side yielded a worse grip and armor that you had to upgrade to even be competitive to the starting one. The main story is fairly long, and it's mostly long because it's drawn out. The game frequently moves the goalposts on you. You'll reach your destination, only to be forced to leave to get some other key, only to come back and get a little bit further and find out you have to go back somewhere else again. As a result, there is a lot of retreading the same ground, even when you do get a chance to use the fast travel gates. Frequently though, the game will force you to walk through the same areas again, and disable your fast travel options and various shortcuts that you've set up. It's a very annoying and obnoxious thing to deal with. When you're tasked with going back to a previous area and you know there's a fast travel gate there but you can't use it because it's disabled, it's pretty obnoxious. A ton of the shortcuts you unlock are also extremely redundant, as there's no need to go back to these areas a second time, ever. The only real purpose these serve is if you're looking for 100% game completion and you miss something on your first trip through, or the area has a feature you cannot access until you've progressed later into the story. Fast travel points simply exist to pick up any collectibles you missed in post-game exploration. They should not be considered a feature of the main story. You're given the ability to go to two extra realms which are gated behind finding runes throughout the world. These yield more advanced equipment upgrades which will be extremely helpful for getting through the rest of the optional hidden encounters and super bosses after game completion. Finally. You would not listen. 
At recommended playing, games either are ascended to the pantheon of games worthy of your time with a recommendation, or are forced to wallow in the miserable muck of mediocrity with a dismissal. God of War is exactly what you're going to expect from the series. Despite a different perspective and story focus, it absolutely is a God of War game. If you weren't a fan of God of War, this probably won't change your mind. If you were a fan, it's more of the same but does feature some more mature themes and story elements, and combat is slightly altered. It has amazing production values across the board. It's more than competent in everything that it does. The harder difficulty levels and optional content will provide additional hours to an already robust game if you desire more from it. The few issues that exist and were mentioned in this review should be considered minor grievances rather than fundamental problems, and the overall experience is very, very good. God of War gets recommended playing's most prestigious verdict of... recommended.